All right, so I'm bigger so you can see. So this would be a healthy small intestine. You have nice villi or fingers along your small intestinal barrier. This is called the brush border. And the fingers provide um, surface area. So when we eat something, digestion starts in the mouth, chewing, salivary amylase, things like that, goes to the stomach. And now stomach acid begins to break down the proteins. Stomach acid moves into the small intestine and triggers the pancreas to release pancreatic enzymes, which further break things down. And then as you get to, to um, dye and tripeptides and, and uh, polysaccharides down to disaccharides, so the smallest sugars and smallest fats and smallest proteins, the last step is the brush border enzymes break, say, the disaccharide a two part sugar into monosaccharide. So down into the, the last smallest piece that can be absorbed through this barrier. Same thing with the proteins and the fats. So if the brush border is doing that and producing those enzymes with this surface area, we can break down a lot at once and absorb a lot at once. Well, in celiac disease, you have what's called villus atrophy. So your fingers start to not be as long and you can get to full villus atrophy, which in chapter six of my book, I talk about, you know, there's, there's a certain hazard ratio associated with this, meaning increased risk of different, of, of all-cause mortality or death. But essentially, when you get to this, rather than having this and breaking down all those almost broken down molecules, now you're here and that breakdown is not happening. So you've got dipeptides and disaccharides and things bouncing off your um, small intestinal barrier, so to speak, and they can be fermentative substrate for the bacteria, um, <coughs> or they can drive inflammation in the GI tract. So a sucrase deficiency is, sucrase is one of those um, brush border enzymes, and oftentimes there's an isomaltase deficiency with it. So there's two of those uh, enzymes that are lacking. So uh, it's, it's, it's looked at as in some people, the villi are destroyed, and that's why they're lacking those enzymes. So rather than give you a $37,000 digestive enzyme, why not take a fraction of that and invest in learning how to heal the GI tract, right? And re, you know, regrow or repair the villi and see, do we get enzymatic action back with that? So that would be, you know, for this lady, that she's like, you know, even if you had 37,000 to spend, like, that's just why it's still only buying you a month and then you need another bottle, right? And another bottle. What can we do to promote the body's functioning here? Because up until two years ago, she was fine, right? So, you know, this hasn't been a lifelong thing for her. Um, so if we can understand underlying physiology, then we can understand, well, how should we examine this? How can we uh, test this? How can we figure out more about it and then approach it from a treatment perspective? And then also we could say, are there any natural products that have brush border enzymes in them that might work for her for say $40 a bottle instead of 37,000.